Hey, we have been loving the deep fakes that Corridor Digital have been doing lately, and one of our users has just done a similar thing using Marty McFly and Doc Brown, Robert Downey Jr. It's great, go check that out. But we haven't got much time to do this, so let's go figure it out now. We thought to try our hand in deep faking using Deep Face Lab and see what results we could get from just a day's play. Well, limited enthusiasm. time, limited let's skill, go. limited knowledge, limited everything. Hell yeah. So we're going to be going over the steps, then jumping into HitFilm for compositing. First up, make sure to pick the right build for your GPU. Our machines aren't strong enough, so we're now going to tear apart one downstairs that we have sitting around, rip out its guts. See, it's all good for Corridor Digital. They've got machines that have like four 2080 Ti's in them. Not that it isn't hard still, because they know what they're doing, but like, it's hard for us because it's our first day and we've realized none of our machines have more than one graphics card in. Uh, we've got a couple of 1080s, so we're going to try a 1080, but it looks like it might take a while. If we do 100,000 iterations, which is it looping over the thing and checking it out, it's about three and a half days. Yeah. So we don't have three and a half days, so we're going to see how well it does in like a day and a half with a, 10 <laughs> a 1080 in a cold room. Download the .exe from the G Drive, link in the description, and install the program to a location of your choosing. There's also a link to the GitHub where you can get more info on the DeepFace Lab, so go check that out. Once installed, go into the DeepFace Lab Nevada folder and you'll find a workspace folder created. This is the folder where all the action will happen, and essentially we'll be going through each of these batch files. We decided to replace my face, for which we needed a clip. As it's our first time, we kept it short and kept the lighting flat to avoid any problems during training. So like, we're going to try and keep your face probably like 20 degrees in either direction. Mm -hmm. So we're not ever losing an eye, not ever getting a profile. While it can do that, it's where it starts getting sketchier. So to help it, we're going to try and keep you kind of looking towards the camera. I'll take a picture of your face face on. I'm going to see if I can find a celebrity that's... Okay, Close cool. Please be someone good. It's, it's not just whether we can find a celebrity, it's whether we can find a celebrity data set that's good. Place, yeah, yeah. I've been told I look like a <laughs> For the actual face swap, there's a bunch of databases online that you can find. We managed to find one of Leonardo DiCaprio and Nicolas Cage, but things were already crazy enough. What you're looking for is as many images and angles as possible. We didn't have the time to create our own collection, but this is possible in DeepFace Lab, so subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay tuned for a tutorial on that process. Once you've found your collection and downloaded it, you'll need to import these into the data source folder. To extract and analyze faces from your chosen video, the clip you're placing the celeb onto, take it into HitFilm and trim it down to the points you need. This is a long enough process as is, so no need to extend the runtime. Export as an MP4 into the workspace folder and name your folder data underscore dist. This is the destination video. Run step three. Extract images from video data destination, full FPS. This will run through the clip, converting it into an image sequence. We didn't go through stage four at this time, but we'll be going into these steps in future. The points in stage five are to organize the results. Start by extracting the frames, sort by histogram, check the results. This will delete anything that may cause errors. Finally, re-extract deleted results debug. We run this step to manually align frames that we deleted in the last step. Training, step six. This is the actual machine learning process. We ended up doing two versions to test the quality of each. Quick 96 is the low quality output, while SAE HD can match with HD quality. Enter the name of your model you're now creating, choose what you're running on, and depending on the mode that you choose, you'll be asked for settings. We ended up going with the defaults and recommendations for now. Now it'll start doing its thing, running as many iterations as it's been told. The recommended number of iterations is 10,000. This can be a long process, but the more you do, the cleaner it'll be. The graph above the images will indicate the errors. As the process goes on, this will eventually turn into a slope. Now we wait until we're done. Or, when you think it's had enough, hit the return key. If we now enter the data destination folder, you'll notice there are image sequences that have been created, containing merge outputs and masks. We'll be using these within HitFilm. Right, okay, so in HitFilm, all we're gonna do is go up to the arrow here and go to image sequence, find where we've found our merge file, select that, import, right click. Let's turn that into a composite shot. And there he is, looking all Leonardo DiCaprio-y. And if we want to change this, we can just go into import the mask layers, the merge mask. And if we want to add that, we can, well, we can use this as a set map to alter this in any way that we want. Make it extra cool. We did it. We actually got Leo DiCaprio's face to stick onto mine. Uh, this is a huge achievement for us, considering it's only been our first day of play. 
this is a massive proof of concept that we can now take what we've learned and apply it to other things. We can revisit the Witcher tutorial that we did the other week and instead of comping, we could just deepfake everyone. This is a massive accomplishment. We've already reached out to the guy who did the Back to the Future deepfake, hoping that you can give us some guidance and tips. But let's pass the question off to you. If you know anything about deepfakes, let us know in the comment section down below if there's anything that we can try. Lighting is one thing that we definitely need to experiment with. We had a lot of circular motion going on, so we need to figure out what that is. If you've never deepfaked before, links in the description to everything that we used during this process. So have a go yourself and see what results you can get within a day's play. If you'd like to see a full tutorial on the process of deepfaking, do let us know in the comments below. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to avoid missing out when we revisit this. We'll also be posting any tests on our Instagram, at fxhomeofficial. So follow and check in sometime to see what we're up to, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.